I'd like to call to order the Morgan County Board of Supervisors. Are we certified in compliance with the open meeting law? We are. The agenda was posted on the 16th at 2 p.m. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Next is roll call. Supervisor Immel, are you chimed in on Zoom? I am here. Thank you. Uh, possibly Supervisor Jorgensen or Supervisor John Kulo. Four supervisors present. Next is the approval of the November 1st, 2022 journal. Supervisor Wagner. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move for approval of the journal. Thank you, Supervisor Wagner. Supervisor Brower. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I will second that motion. Thank you, Supervisor Brower. Is there any adjustments? Seeing none, please vote. Supervisor Immel, how do you vote? I support, yes. Thank you. Motion is approved unanimously. Next is consideration of appointments by chairperson. The Monarch Library System Board, and a new appointment, Daniel Lamb of Sheboygan, reappointment, Tom Duane of Random Lake. Supervisor Gehring. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move to concur with your appointment and reappointment to the Monarch Board. Thank you, Supervisor Gehring. Supervisor Brower. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I will second the motion. Thank you, Supervisor Brower. Any discussion? Supervisor Colson. Okay. I wonder if I wonder if you've got. Uh, I'm wondering whether your uh, things are switched. I'm guessing. Could you, pl could you please uh, try again, Supervisor Spells? Oh. Now it is okay. Okay, I think I got your microphone on. Okay. Anyways, can you hear? Me? Yeah, you can hear me. I just have a couple questions in regards to this. Um, like, who made the decision? And that was that's one question. And then my other question would be like, you know, with these positions that people apply for, it, would it be possible for us to get like the other people that applied and their information? So those two questions. The first one is their appointments by the chairperson, and I review their applications and choose one, and then they're voted on by the county board. Okay. And as far as the other question, I will turn it over. So you said. So, like, you you made the decision? Is that what you said? Correct. And okay. Then, and then they're voted on here. Okay. Gotcha. And for the second part? Could you just repeat the second part of your question? Yeah, I, I was just, my question is, like, when we have, like, positions like this where, like, people apply, like, other people apply, could we get, like, the other people that applied their information and, like, resumes and things? Sure, and, and I can I can tell you that depending on what the appointment is, it's not a one size fits all process. Okay. Um, so certainly you can make a request to have additional information about the applicants. Um, depending on which appointment is, it would um, be a difference of how you made that request. But there's no reason you couldn't have that information. If you're interested in that in the future, you could request that at the time that you receive your agenda packet. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you.
Is there any other discussion? I'm, I'm really curious about the clicker. So if you wouldn't mind, just try and uh, request to the request to speak. Uh, nothing's coming in. Okay. Yeah, it worked for. Okay. Um, well, what? Perfect. Excellent. All right, good. That would have I'm glad we got that straightened out. <laughs> yeah. uh, seeing no further discussion, please vote on the appointments. Supervisor Emil, how do you vote? I vote in favor. Thank you. Uh, motion is approved 22 to 2. Okay, next is presentations. We have none. Uh, public addresses. There are none. Letters, communications, and announcements. There are three resolutions um, from Marathon County and Price and St. Croix, all regarding uh, the entry-level compensation rate for assistant district attorneys. All right, we've had all those in the past, and we have something coming up on that. So we'll receive them for information. That's County. All. County Administrator's Report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening. It's good to see everybody. Happy December. Happy holidays. And uh, just to quickly also respond to the question, anytime we have advisory appointments like that, they're generally always handled in the County Administrator, County Chair's office. So. Uh, our assistant, uh, Peggy, does a wonderful job putting out the news releases and managing that. And sometimes it's my appointment to be confirmed by the board. So ultimately, you're the final decision maker for the chairperson's appointment to be confirmed by the board, as was done tonight. But anytime time uh, we have situations like that, we generally don't receive a lot of applicants, even though we put it in the media. And then sometimes we call and encourage people. But don't ever hesitate if you see something on your agenda and want to see, well, were there any other applicants? Sometimes there may not have been any. But if there were, just stop by our office or let us know. I'm glad to share that. In your pack this evening, a rather light agenda tonight. So I'll do my best to speak slowly and try to you know, make sure we get a full per diem out of this evening's meeting. Right? A couple of very important topics. And one that the chair and vice chair just took action on is you'll see it under resolutions introduced requesting the state of Wisconsin review and revise the compensation rates for entry-level and experienced assistant district attorneys. As you know very well, we are struggling with recruitment and retention throughout our organization. Everyone's struggling, but we are really struggling in our district attorney's office. So this resolution will be referred to the executive committee. However, we just recently received some additional information on this from a group called the Justice Coalition coalition made up of district attorneys and judges and other people who have an interest in seeing our judicial system work well. And in their information, they, are, they provided a template resolution and further supporting documentation, not only to adequately fund district attorney positions so we can recruit and retain staff, but also public defenders. So just a heads up that when this goes to the executive committee, presuming that's where the uh, Vice Chair sends it. Uh, if you're interested in following that, please join us at the Executive Committee and don't be surprised if it comes back with some amendments or some additional information to make it broader and, and also touch on encouraging the Governor's Office and our legislators to adequately fund these important positions. So just a heads up. The other thing I wanted to briefly touch, 
touch on was the use of the American Rescue Plan Act funds. As you can see, you have resolution number five in your packet this evening. This is the fifth time the county board is being asked to make decisions on ARPA allocations. And this was once again very thoughtfully done. I want to compliment Matt Stripmotter, our Health and Human Services Director, our Health and Human Services Committee, of course the Executive Committee, because we are managing these always through the Executive Committee and then on to the County Board for your final approval. And as you know, if you've reviewed this, we're looking to provide some modest equity adjustments for 2022, so this year already that would be backdated for Health and Human Services staff. Going forward, those positions are funded as part of our budget that you already approved. And then you'll see in the Sheriff's Department, correctional officers and dispatchers. And this is not the first time you've taken action to provide ARPA funds or premium pay for our correctional officers and dispatchers. But to the Sheriff's credit and to our law committee's credit, they came forward and said, you know, we've already taken action at Rocky Knoll to provide three years of funding for CNAs and nurses. Uh, why should we not do the same thing for our dispatchers and correctional officers? So what you're seeing this evening is really a consistent approach between two departments that have critically important staff that we obviously need to recruit and be able to retain. And I, I think we all appreciate, and certainly your constituents appreciate, we have to have correctional officers. We have to have dispatchers. And uh, we have to have nurses and CNAs. So that's what's being predominantly focused on this evening. And then finally, so were we at big picture? And we briefly discussed this at the Finance Committee this week, but keep in mind that a number of your allocations have already been put to good use. We've made a number of investments at Rocky Knoll, uh, whether it's to our cooling tower, chiller replacement, our uh, duct cleaning and smoke damper, things that we might have otherwise had to do down the road, but this was good to make a more sterile environment, a healthier environment for our residents and our workers there. So that work is underway. A number of recruitment and retention packages have gone forward, as you're well aware. So those dollars have been put to good use. Um, I want to thank and acknowledge Supervisor Tom Wagner. And, and Tom certainly had support from board members as well. But Tom took the lead to be sure that we improve the air quality in the facility and recommended an ultraviolet air filtration system at Rocky Knoll. And it took us a little time to evaluate and look at different options, but that is now underway. And again, thank you, Supervisor Wagner and Healthcare Centers Committee and others that have supported that initiative. That's just another enhancement to Rocky Knoll and taking care of frail people. So I'm, I'm real pleased that's underway. And then finally, so where are we at big picture? Well, to date, uh, we received 22.4 million, as you recall from ARPA. To date, the county board has approved or allocated 17.8 million of the 22.4. Tonight, if you support this resolution, that'll be another six, 691,000. So that means the balance remaining is 3.8 million. So we still have 3.8 million. We have till 2024 to make allocation decisions, 2026 to actually spend the dollars. And uh, I wanted to end on a a couple, of, uh, a couple of positive notes as well as a thank you. First, I can't tell you how much I appreciate the support and leadership of the county board and your thoughtful approach with allocating these dollars. We, we have to, again, have correctional officers and emergency responders and dispatchers and nurses and CNAs, and, and I really appreciate the approach you've taken. I also am so grateful for all of our healthcare workers <coughs> and emergency responders. All of us are here this evening. You know, we're comfortable now, not wearing masks. You know, we've, we've gotten through, I think, the worst of the pandemic. Uh, but if you're in a nursing home, it doesn't feel over to them. They're still wearing masks and, and following best practices to protect those frail residents, particularly if a frail resident is not able to take a vaccine for one reason or another. So it's not over for them. So if you get a chance to to say thank you to a healthcare worker or an emergency responder, uh, please do, because uh, they continue the fight to the good fight, and they're tired. They're tired. We had 32 members, family members, at our house this past weekend, hosting for Christmas. And isn't it nice when they come 
and nice when they go. <laughs> it was wonderful. I mean, kids, grandchildren, everyone sleeping on air mattresses, you know the drill. I think we've all done that at some point, but 32 people in our house, and I hope that you and all of our healthcare workers, emergency responders, are gonna be able to take just a little time over the holidays to spend with loved ones and family and just take a little break. Hopefully get a little rest, but be good to yourselves. So again, a big shout out and thank you to all of our healthcare workers and emergency responders. I've been participating on a local government reform uh, committee, a local government funding reform committee, a task force, if you will, with about a dozen or so people the last year town, city, village, county representation. And we've been concerned about, okay, we were fortunate to receive these federal dollars. They truly helped small businesses and others get through COVID. They certainly have helped local governments continue to provide essential services that I just touched on. But as we all know in this room, these ARPA funds, you know, they don't go on in perpetuity. The good news is it's not a one year, right? We have three, four, potentially five years to utilize these funds. But we have to plan. We have to thoughtfully plan on how we're going to address this funding cliff, as I like to call it, going forward. You don't have to have the answers tomorrow or next week or next month. But we have to utilize the time we have in the months and the next year or so to plan on how we're going to address this. And if it's going to get addressed, it's going to require a partnership and collaboration between counties and all local units of government, the governor's office, and the legislature. It's going to take all of us. And I have to say I'm encouraged with what I've been hearing from the governor and his staff. I think there's truly an appreciation for what all local units of government have been grappling with and the challenges we face also been very encouraged with what Senator Lemieux has been saying and Representative Terry Kotzma and appreciate their leadership and their recognition that we've got a situation where we're going to need everyone to pull together. So when you participate at these legislative breakfasts, it makes a difference. Not all of you do and everyone's busy, but if you get a chance to do so, encouraging them to continue to be mindful of that and also we're going to have to stand with them uh, when changes are made. And I will end with this. I personally don't envision Sheboygan County saying we need to raise taxes. I certainly don't think Sheboygan County is going to be asking property taxpayers to shoulder even more responsibility for underfunded or unfunded state mandates. But when you're looking at a situation right now where the state has upwards of an $8 billion positive variance, what a wonderful opportunity to have thoughtful dis discussions about how the state takes its pool of resources and shares more of that with local units of government. If you think about it, it's not the state's money, right? it's all of our money, we're all taxpayers, there's different ways that's collected, but if they would share more of what's being collected now with Sheboygan County and other local units of government, we can address these challenges and maintain essential programs and services. And it was heartening for me to hear during the elections and the commercials, and aren't we all glad that's over? A one predominant theme throughout, it seemed like everyone involved supported public safety. Everyone involved, every candidate, every commercial seemed to really emphasize the need for public safety. Well, we are in the midst of providing public safety county government and we will need more state shared service, more state shared revenue in order to sustain what we have. So please continue to attend those legislative breakfasts. Please continue to encourage our legislators. Uh, I think we're fortunate that they know us and they know our needs and I'm, I'm optimistic that we're going to tackle this together. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Next is consideration of committee reports, executive committee. Ordinance number four regarding changing supervisory district boundaries to reflect annexation from Town of Wilson in a district 10 and from Town of Sheboygan in a district five recommendation to enact. Supervisor Gehring. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move for adoption. Thank you, Supervisor Gehring. Supervisor Brower. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I will second that motion. Thank you, Supervisor Brower. Under discussion? Seeing no discussion, please vote. Supervisor Immel. I vote aye. Supervisor John Kulo, aye. Thanks for chiming in, Supervisor Kulo. We'll grab your clicker here real quick. Please, everyone, if you would re-vote for that one. We have to, to back out to make him present, Supervisor Bosman. Maybe stand on your head and do it. How do you vote? We'll have Cheryl do it. How do you vote, Supervisor Bosman? Thank you. All right, that's unanimous, 25 supervisors. Okay, a consideration of committee reports, finance committee. Resolution 21, regarding approving the use of American Rescue Plan Act funds number five, recommendation to adopt. Supervisor Testrodi. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, move for adoption. Thank you, Supervisor Testrodi. Supervisor Wagner. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll second that motion. Thank you, Supervisor Wagner. Under discussion? Seeing no discussion, please vote. Supervisor Immel, how do you vote? I vote aye. Supervisor Kulo, how do you vote? Aye. Thank you. Supervisor Bosman, how do you vote? We'll have Cheryl do it. Thank you. Approve 22 to, to 3. With that, I turn the gavel over to the Vice Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Resolutions introduced. Resolution number 22 from the Law Committee. Regarding requesting the State of Wisconsin review and revise the compensation rates for entry level and experienced assistant district attorney. Resolution number 22 will be referred to the Executive Committee. Resolution number 23 from Planning Resources Agriculture Extension Committee. Regarding authorizing application for Department of Natural Resources Service Water Grant. Thank you. That'll be referred to finance. There are no ordinances to be introduced tonight. So concluding our business tonight, I'll call for adjournment. Supervisor Testrodi. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chairman. I'll move to adjourn. And Supervisor Brower. I will second that motion. We are adjourned. Supervisor please vote. Rimmel. Please vote, please. Vote aye. Supervisor Kulo. Aye. Thank you. Happy holidays.